Merry meet and welcome to another episode of Kitchen Witch Table Talks. My name is Leandra Witchwood and today we're going to talk about some heavy information, some really deep and necessary information. And this is going to be broken up in a few parts because of the nature of the information. First, I'm going to be speaking to newbies, those who are new to the craft, who are new to Wicca, new to paganism, and you're looking for validation. You're looking for a teacher to teach you. You're looking for a group to work with. You're looking for that connection that goes beyond what you get from books and being a solitary. And then after that, I'm going to speak to coven leaders or supposed coven, coven leaders, teachers, educators, um, leaders in our community who are genuinely looking to guide those who come into this craft and they need guidance, they need help, they need knowledge, they need growth. And this is touchy because there's so much information to go over. There's so much to consider. And there are areas of caution that we need to practice. Now, for a newbie, finding a teacher, finding that trusted, knowledgeable, and well-educated person or group to guide you on your path is critical because it will take you farther than you will ever think possible. And that's why it's important because you can't ascend, you can't transcend, you can't grow if you don't have the input or the perspective of an educated and well-experienced teacher, someone who's been around the block. I always recommend somebody who's been around at least 10 to 15 years. 15 is probably the lowest I would consider going. I've been doing this for 20 years, more than 20 years. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm dating myself. I started this when I was about 19, 20 years old. And I, I didn't have a teacher at first. And it wasn't until I gained a teacher, a valued teacher, a very well-educated, I'm going to keep stressing that, someone who is very well-educated, who is very experienced, and who has been around the block for a long time. Now, my, my mentor, she had about 30 years experience when I came to her, when we connected with each other. And the wealth of knowledge she offered me, the, the wealth of expansion in my understanding of things was profound. It still is. She's still teaching me and I, <laughs> I don't really contact I'm not really in contact with her anymore. She moved away. So even in the long term, even in, after you leave the presence of that teacher, they're still teaching you. They're still giving you nuggets without you realizing it. So for, for those of you who are new to this path, and maybe you've done a few, you know, you've read a few books, you've done a few things on your own, but you may, you might feel that you need, you need to, to take that next step. You need to find that teacher who can kind of nudge you in the right direction. That's important. And that's why I want to go over this. This is a sheet that I offer to all of my students who take the Witchcraft for Beginners training course. And this is an important sheet when you are looking to work with a group or a teacher as a beginner in this path. And I still use this sheet when I'm um, going to meet with other leaders and I'm looking to work with them in other community um, structures and, and modalities. So it, it's a great sheet to have. And I offer this sheet through the class that I offer on the leandrawitchwood.com site, which is the nonprofit educational site I run. And I'm going to give you a copy of this sheet within this video. The link will be below so that you can use it when you go to meet with potential groups, leaders, educators, teachers. Okay. So I'm just going to take some time and we're going to go over some of the different elements on this sheet that you should probably be aware of. The first thing I put on this sheet, of course, for you to consider is your intuition. Your intuition is going to be critical in picking the right group, the right person to work with. Your intuition is going to be that guide. And coming into this path, if you've come from a past where your intuition was totally discredited and it wasn't something you're used to following, this is going to be a hard one for you. But keep in mind, it's important. So that's 
one element that you should consider when you are meeting with a new teacher or a new student is trust your intuition. So I have this all broken out into sections where you can rate the topic or the experience. And so what we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out a couple of these because this could, has the potential of being a very long video and I don't want you to sit here for 10 minutes listening to me ramble on when you can print out the sheet and get the gist of it yourself. So let's, let's look at um, how much caution the group presents to you. Most groups are going to be very cautious. Most credible groups are going to be cautious when interviewing or meeting or considering a new student for their group. And there's very good reason for that. One is group dynamics. They want to make sure that you match the group dynamics or that you will help enhance or improve the group dynamics. They don't want to bring somebody in who's going to cause trouble or be too much of a clash of personality or have completely polar opposite ideas and um, theologies than the current group has. It just, it's too much friction. So they're going to be very cautious about who they bring in. They're going to be cautious about the information they give you up front because they're not going to give you oath-bound information. Now, basic information, yes, they should give that to you willingly. But when you're asking very specific questions about how they practice, what they practice, what tools they use, what herbs they use, sp specific spells or anything like that, you're going to get shut down. So in the, just know that that is acceptable. There's only a limited amount of information they're going to be giving you in this initial meeting. So let's jump down and you know, let's look at a couple of these where it, it asks the level of personal responsibility they demonstrate as well as what they're going to expect you to demonstrate. This is important. You got to know what they expect of you because if you're going in blind and they expect you to spend two hours a day on a specific activity or within a specific coven structure and you're not able to do that, that's going to be an issue, right? So let's look at ethics. Ethics is another big one for covens, groups, teachers, individuals. What are their ethics like? Do they have a moral code? Do they have a standard for how you should behave, how the coven should behave? how the priestess, the high priest, how any of member of that group should behave. Um, do you get a sense that they are a spiritual group or are they a little more, um, not shallow, I don't want to say shallow, but are they a little more mundane? Are they a little more, more on the surface rather than a spiritual development type group? Do they expect you to be, go through personal development? These are things that you want to be very, very aware of. Um, member retention. Do they seem to have a lot of turnover? Do people come to the group, stay for a couple of months and then disappear and never come back? That's something to consider. Um, here's, a, here's a couple of big ones. These two are huge. And I find that, that in my many years of practicing and working with other groups and community groups, I, I had hoped that this would kind of go away, but it's not. And I think it's a lot of it has to do with the misconception about Wicca, witchcraft, and paganism. First one is sexual expectations. Now, don't get me wrong. In many traditions, sexual acts, sexual experiences are part of the religious experience. But they cannot be. Sexual acts cannot be the forefront of their teachings. That cannot be the forefront of what they expect from their group. First, it should be the spirituality part, the personal development part, the religious part of it. Then the act of sexual orientation and activities needs to be very much in the foreground as a tool. Okay. If you go into a group, if you interview with a group and their focus is primarily on their sexual orientations, or sexual activities, that's a red flag, a huge one. Unfortunately, there are a lot of predators who gravitate to this path because of its freelance style, <laughs> its freelance potentials. And yes, we should all be able to practice our religious and spiritual paths as we choose. However, if you are not comfortable 
with sex and sexual acts as part of your path, that group is not right for you. And you should never, ever, 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 ever be pressured into doing something that you feel is morally, ethically, and emotionally wrong for you. Okay? So if you interview with a group and you get to this section where you start asking questions about their sexual expectations and either they become very cl clammed up and refusing to tell you anything, or if they openly say, yes, we expect you to be very sexually active with every member of the group, you have to decide if that's right for you. Personally, that's not right for me. My path is with the ethereal. My path is with the esoteric. It is not necessarily with my body. Now, not to say that that can't be part of it, okay? Sexual acts, sexual rights are very powerful, but they should not be the primary focus, okay? Um, the other one is a financial focus. How, how much emphasis does this group put on finances? Do they expect you to give a certain amount of money to the group every time you meet or every month. That's not to say that's bad. Now, don't get me wrong there, okay? Because in order for a group to function, in order for a group to buy supplies or maybe even pay for the location of where they meet, money is necessary. But when that money is padding the pockets of the leaders or the, the facilitator of that group, that's when it's a red flag. At every meeting, if money is expected to be put into the kitty, into the, the uh, coven account or the group account, then at every single meeting, those books should be opened up and whoever is in charge of that money needs to explain where every single penny was spent or earned, okay? It needs to be very transparent. And that's what I'm trying to get to here is this entire thing when you're interviewing with a group, when you're considering a new teacher, they need to be very transparent with you, okay? So uh, let's go into a lighter thing because that is just so heavy. I know it is, and I don't like to be that heavy. I really enjoy the lightness of, of this experience. I enjoy the potential, the possibilities of working with other people and experiencing things that you never thought possible. You know, my skin, <laughs> I'm starting to get chills thinking about the possibilities because there are so many wonderful things out there. I don't want it to be all gloom and doom. So let's talk about humor. <laughs> How much humor do the group leaders, the group members show? Do they joke with one another? Do they feel comfortable with one another to, you know, pick at each other or just be jovial with one another and that to me is such a huge thing if i meet with a group and they are just staunch <laughs> and they don't really interact with either one another they don't they don't feel comfortable touching one another or they don't feel comfortable cracking a joke with one another that to me is a red flag because to me if you a coven a study group a teacher it's like an extended family so that means you're going to treat one another like an extended family you're going to laugh with each other. You, you're going to go out on outings with each other. You know, maybe you go to the park together and joke about things and play games and laugh and have fun with each other. That's part of it too. So, like I said, I will have this monster evaluation sheet below in the um, the description of this this video. And this video is kind of, it's a little bit segmented from what I've been doing, which is the advice for beginner series, but I think it, it, it applies. And like I said, I will, um, I, I will have the rest of it available soon because I want to do this in more than just one part. Because while I talk to the beginners, while I talk to the newbies, I also want to talk to the potential leaders or the current leaders of our community too, because I think we need to come together with understanding. So if you enjoyed this video, if you got a lot of value out of it, you got a lot of information out of it, please you know, subscribe below so you get notifications about any new videos coming out. Give it a like. Head over to the Leandra Witchwood site, leandrawitchwood.com. I'll have the links below. And check out the, the classes I have available. You'll find a lot of value in those as well. And head over to themagickitchen.com, my blog site. 
where you can get recipes and spells and ideas and suggestions and tips and tricks, anything you need to make your path a little bit brighter, a little bit more cohesive. So until next time, I wish you many, many bright blessings.